Well, I represent Telecommunities Canada, which is a national association of community networking associations. And the main reason I'm here is to figure out uh, the degree to which the idea of the internet is affecting governments. Well, that, that was primarily my main goal. Uh, the background to that is that um, the perceptions of the internet's role in society um, don't really seem to have a strong impact on Canadian public policy yet for all of our connectivity for reasons that aren't obvious to me and uh, I'm quite startled to come here and discover that there's a whole bunch of nation states who have a consensus emerging that uh, the internet is where it's at and that, that the old line communications industries that have been giving them advice on public policy uh, should be shoved to the side because the, the message is the wrong message. Well, I, I'll introduce my own topic with that as question as, as a bridge. Uh, one of the issues for me is the question of that awful phrase, user-centric digital identity. But, but I have some specific reasons for that. And um, I think the primary one is under the heading of the word authenticity. And by that I do not mean authentication at all. It's, it's, it's a human quality that I believe that the internet enhances. And let, let me back into it with a short story. Um, in the current issue of uh, Seed Magazine, there's a little panel by an archaeologist explaining why he does science. And he says, um, I uh, dig up material objects and, and I deal with material objects because the people are dead a long time ago. Says, but the reason I use the objects is to try and find out the mind of the culture that created them or what I can find out about the mind of the culture through the artifact. And to me, uh, in a way, the way in which we understand the internet is more like archaeology than anything else because there is an artifact there and a cultural mind created it. So examining what the artifact is in that archaeological sense tells you what went into that mind. And one of the things that occurs to me is that we now have more power for the individual to form their social relationships than we have ever had before as a consequence of the internet. Now what happens is that identity is formed in social relationship. It's not, you know, I'm not Garth Autonomous, I'm a product of all the relationships that I have. And now there's this capacity to create relationships that is so wildly imaginative that we've never really seen anything like it. And the one thing that seems to work for me, for a responsible human being, is how authentic can you be in your relationships with others? If you, if you notice, for example, the engineering task force, write code and achieve consensus. Well, we all know that there might be a, someone writing new code and there might be 50 people involved and that five of them are, are really writing the code. But the 50 people agree that those people are the primary code writers. It's a power law. Eh? They, they agree that they're the code writers because they behave more authentically in relation to the problem than the others in the group. And that authenticity has something to do only with the experience that they're in, only the situation. I am not talking about leadership here at all. And it's that capacity to force authenticity into human relationship the, uh, that the internet reinforces uh, that, that I think is one of the major misunderstood and very powerful. Uh, I'm, I, I mean, in, in the context of, of Canada, we were, uh, at the time of the previous OECD meeting, um, the, probably the second or third most connected nation on Earth. Now, on some scales, the OECD scale, I believe, we're 10th, and, and on other scales, we're 14th. And we're moving 
uh, uh, steadily backwards. And, and to me, uh, having begun so strongly uh, with uh, a kind of a powerful open dialogue in the country about what this meant, that, that dialogue has disappeared in, in my country. And I don't know how to get it back. And I really think that we need to do that. So um, I see some evidence uh, that uh, municipalities in my country are figuring that out because they're saying to themselves, well, we have to build our own fiber network and own it as a public utility. And that's very new in Canada. But it's also very fragile. And the provincial governments and the federal government don't really support it uh, yet. They don't. They ignore it. They're not. They're, there's no there there, and and I think that there should be. I. Uh, that's an interesting question, which means I have to think about it. Um, um, wh I don't. In, back to that idea of the internet as. Uh, an artifact of a, a culture that has a mind. Um, fundamentally, the internet reflects a different kind of governance. It's the governance of self-organizing systems. And in self-organizing systems, what you have to look for is where are the rules about changing the rules? And in, in self-organizing systems, where they are is they're in me. Uh, they're in each individual s element of the set, like a flock of birds, eh? And so they evolve changes to the rules within themselves that govern the shape of the pattern that emerges. And we live in a world where people imagine governance to be mechanistic. And so the rules about changing the rules, there's, there's a bunch of folk, eh? And the rules, about, the, the rules that govern them are imagined to be imposed upon them from outside of the system, which isn't so. It never was. It was a fiction, an idea in the mind.